Yeah. Okay. Um, I like the question my brother asked you. He said, uh, do you feel safe out here? Because we need to know. This is our community, right? right? Our people are out here. We need to feel safe in our own community. Right. Your response was, you feel safe because you do what? You just, you keep to yourself. You keep to yourself. You got children? You got a son. He's 11 years old. How do you teach your son to stay safe in this community? I mean, I talk to him, I, I say, well, you know, sometimes you gotta stay to yourself. If a problem comes to you, it's go to come out and Okay, I, I like that. If, you, if a problem comes to you, you need to deal with it. All right, now, do you believe in the Bible? Yeah. Okay. I want to show you the difference between what you said about staying to yourself and what the Bible says that we should be doing as a community. Is that fair enough? Give me Zephaniah 2 and 1 real quick. So, Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. This is what God says that he expects out of us as men in our community. Right. Read that. The book of Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Gather yourselves together. You see what God just said? God didn't say stick to yourself. Right. God said gather together. So we believe in this book right here. We have to have the faith to apply what the book says. And then I got to teach my son to do exactly what the Bible says. Right. I can't tell my son to stick to himself because those aren't the instructions that God gave us on how to, if, on how to fix our community. You got to follow the instructions. Let's read the instructions again. Gather yourselves together. Uh -huh. Yay! Gather together, O nation, not desire. Now the reason that we asked who feels safe in their community is because we are the nation that is not desired. That's right. When it says not desired, what it means is what nation of people is in America living in the slums? What nation of people has to go to another nation of people to spend food stamps on food that's not good for them? What nation of people don't have jobs? What nation of people fit the description? I'm going to let you finish the sentence. Niggas can't have what? There it go. There it go. Let me say it again. Niggas can't have what? Niggas can't have shit. Who fits that description? We do. We do. We are suffering from the curses of God. Because we have broken his commandments and we have not followed the instructions that are written in this book right here. Right. Give me 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Niggas can't have shit. Would you believe that the Bible says that would fit the description of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans who are really called the Jews according to the Bible? Read. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. This is why niggas can't have SH. Read. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. that ye all speak the same thing. Na nave? What was it name? No bond. What did the Bible just tell us to do? It said that we should speak what? The same thing. The same thing. So when I see Navan and Navan sees Jehoshua, we should be saying two different things or the same thing? The same thing. Right. So if me and you are speaking the same thing, we're doing the same thing, we're following the same commandments, would it be easy or would it be hard for us to be together? I mean, it's easy. It'll be easy. It would be easy, but the issue that we have in the community is that we're not doing that. Right. Read that again. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Read. that ye all speak the same thing. Read on. And that there be no divisions among you. God says he doesn't want there to be any division amongst us. My brother's over there on the other corner. It's supposed to be no divisions between us. Right. Me and you, it's supposed to be no division between us. The division that God has set up is a division between different nations of people. Right. The division is between us and the people that own that store right there. Right. Right. But we've fallen so far from our heritage that we unite with people that hate us and we're divided amongst our own brothers. That's right. You know. And that's what we got to fix in our community. But we cannot fix it unless we apply the instructions written in the Bible. Right, right. Read it again. 
Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. that ye all speak the same thing. Read on. And that there be no divisions among you. You hear that, my brothers? It all, if, if you banging, God tell you you ain't supposed to be banging. Right. Because all it does is set a division between you and your own brothers. Right. right. Based on a neighborhood that you live in. Based on a color that you wear. Based on a street number that you are part of. Bring it on. It ain't supposed to be no divisions amongst the so-called black men. Right. Read. But that ye be perfectly joined together. You see how the Bible says the opposite of what our own minds tell us? Wake them up. Your own mind said, I'm going to stick to myself. Right. I'm going to do my own thing to try to stay safe. But God says that's not going to keep you safe. Right. The only thing that will keep you safe is if you apply what's written in the Bible. Read, read on. But let ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind. In the same mind, meaning we think the same. And in the same judgment. And in the same judgment. So when we see evil, we see evil the same. Right. But this place that we live in has taught us not to see evil things as evil. Right. They taught us that evil things are now acceptable. Right. And how did they do that? Give me 1 Corinthians 15, 33. How did, how did we inherit this trick bag here in America to make us think that evil is good and good is evil? Teach. I want you to answer that. How did we start to accept evil things as acceptable now? Make your plan, officer. I don't know. I don't know why. Your son is a lover. What kind of music does he like to listen to? He, don't he, he just plays video. He don't listen. Okay, okay, fair enough. How about yourself? What kind of music did you listen to growing up? Uh, I listen to like reggae, R&B. Reggae, R&B. Okay, so in the R&B music, what is it typically talking about? I'm talking about a lot of stuff like relationships. Trey songs. Mr. Steal Your Girl, what is his songs about? I don't know, I don't listen to him. <laughs> Give me an artist. Uh, uh, shit, I got a lot of Favorite artists? Uh, shit, I don't really have. I just listen to them. I don't really care about the name of the artist. I just listen to them. So songs. you can't name me one R and B artist? You said you grew up listening to R and B. Yeah, I, I listen to R and B, but I don't really care. That name. I just listen to them. Okay. Like, 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 if I'm on Spotify, if I'm on Spotify, uh -huh. and I click on, I click on the song, and I just listen to it. Yeah, after that, I just go to another, another song. All right, well, let me ask you this. The R&B music that's on, playing on the radio station and Spotify, is that talking about a husband dealing with his wife? Um, certain thing, yeah. Like, relationship. Ain't no R&B song talking about a husband and wife. Right. right. These R&B artists ain't even married. Right. 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 The people that play the R&B music, that produce all the children that live in this community, are they married? The people playing the R&B music in these apartments right now, getting busy to the R&B music, are not married. Don't play with me, brother. The music that's being pushed is pushing fornication in our community. It's pushing murder in our community. It's pushing drugs in our community. If you can't see that, then you're blind. You're not paying attention. But let me show you what the Bible says once again. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Uh -huh. Be not deceived. God does not want you to be deceived, my brother. I was once deceived. I was once deceived to think that this music was good. I was once deceived to think that I was just listening to the beat and that the words didn't have any effect on me. But now, check this out. Read that. Evil communications corrupt good manners. You see what the Bible says about evil communications? So I'm listening to this music, and this music is corrupting my mind. Are you married to the mother of your son? You see what happened? All the music that you listened to corrupted your manners and the manners of your woman to the point where now y'all are doing something unlawful. That's right. Because y'all were supposed to be married before she carried. That's right. right. That's right. And then once she carried that child, together, y'all were supposed to raise that child up to be a man. That's right. Give me Sirach 25 and 1. Give me Sirach chapter 25 verse 1. If you don't mind, what happened between you and your son's mother? We 
just went our separate ways. We ain't been together since 2015. We, we, we stopped talking in 2015. This was after the baby came? No, nah, he, he was born. I, th I think he was about a year or two or something like that. It always happens in our community. Yeah. How, how long were y'all together before she got pregnant? Uh, 10 years. Y'all were together for 10 years. Right. 10 years. Right. This is a plague in the black community. Right. Everything always good when you fornicating, you smoking the weed, listening to the R, the reggae, the R&B music. But as soon as the baby comes, all hell breaks loose. Right. Right. All hell breaks loose because God's laws have not been applied in that relationship. Right. Right. But what has been applied in that relationship is evil communication. And the manners inside that relationship have been corrupted. This is what the righteous communication would communicate to you and what should have been your wife before y'all had a son. Read. Sarah, chapter 25, verse 1. Read. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. So God sees three distinct things as beautiful. Three distinct things. Read. The unity of brethren. The what? The unity of brethren. Goes right back to the first point. Because evil communication has been a part of your life. Now at how old are you? Now at 36 years old, your solution is to not be unified with your brethren like the Bible says. Your solution is to stay to yourself. Further proving that evil communication has corrupted your manners. Because God says in multiple places, Zephaniah 2 and 1, gather together. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10, no divisions amongst you. Be perfectly joined together. Surah 25 and 1, unity of brethren. Read on. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors. Even if you're not my blood brother, we live in a co the same community. The Bible says that it should be love from one toward another. So your son should be like my son. Right. My son should be like your son. You should have trust that if I see your son in danger, that I'm going to look out for him. Right. That if my son goes missing, that you're going to be a part of a big party of mass people out there looking for him. Right. Right. Turning over every stone, right. opening every door, see? getting no rest until one of our sons is found. Right. Right. Read. A man and a wife. A man and what? And a wife. Baby mom. A wife. X. A wife. Three. They agree together. The Bible says that a man and woman are supposed to agree together. And guess what that agreement is going to be based off of? The Bible. Right. That's right. And what are we reading? The Bible. That's right. So this is the righteous communication that's missing in our community on why there's no unity between right. brethren, why there's no love between neighbors, and why the man and woman do not agree together as one. Right. So Brother Nave, am I getting it right? Nave? Navan. Navan? Brother Navan. I got a son, you got a son. I want my son to be a man. What do you want your son to be? You want your son to be a man. How are you going to raise your son to be a man? Talking to him about what? About life. Give me an example. What should he do in his life? Okay. All right. So let's be more specific. Good. I'm in my son's life, you in your son's life. All right? Let's talk about a common scenario. Let's talk about a common scenario. My son sees an attractive woman. Your son sees an attractive woman. What should I teach my son and what should you teach your son? If he sees attractive woman, I mean, he can't, he can't date until, until he probably at least 18. Okay, so you're going to teach your son to date when he's 18. Yeah. Okay, let me show you what I'm going to teach my son. Give me Sirach chapter 6 verse 7. Give me Sirach chapter 6 verse 7. I'm going to show you the righteous communication that's needed in our community so that we can be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. This is what I'm going to teach my son. Read. The book of Sirach chapter 6 verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend. I'm going to teach new. Uh, Nivon. Nivon. When I teach my son, I'm going to say, son, 
if you see an attractive woman, this is what I want you to do. If thou wouldest get a friend, uh -huh. prove him first. I'm going to say that sister attractive to you, you got to prove that sister first. You got to make sure that she is what she say that she is. She say that she righteous and keep the commandments. Sit back and watch her for a little bit. Right. Matter of fact, if you think you like this woman, let's observe her mother. Because this is what the Bible says. Give me Ezekiel chapter 14, chapter 16, verse 44. I'm going to say, son, let's look at her mother. And let's see if her mother is the type of woman that we would want to have for a wife for you. Right. Because her daughter isn't going to be any different than her. Her daughter is going to inherit the same spirit as her mother. Thus saith the Lord. Read. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 44. Right. Behold, everyone that useth Proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, uh -huh. saying, as is the mother, as is the mother, so is her daughter. So is her daughter. Imagine, Nave, imagine how much headache we could have saved Come on. if we just took a look at a woman's mother to say, damn, her mama ain't S-H, right. so she probably ain't gonna be S-H either. Right. Her mama won't marry to her daddy, she probably ain't gonna be married to me. Her mother cheated on her husband. She probably gonna cheat on me. Because that's what the Bible says. And the only thing that could save a woman from following into those evil steps is her repenting and coming back to the laws of God. So me and you both got a son. The Bible says we should be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Right. So I should be telling my son the same thing you should tell your son. Right. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is youth.